Hello, good evening and welcome to UK Crime Book Club. Um, this evening I'm delighted to be joined by Douglas Jackson um, and he's going to be talking to us this evening about his latest book, Blood Roses, which I have a proof copy here. And I have the real copy here, which looks a lot better, I think. <laughs> I think it does. It's got the title on the front, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that helps, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for our delay. We were a little bit held up with um, tech issues, um, which we've now sorted, thankfully. So thank you, everybody, for being patient. Um, so, yeah, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, is it Douglas? Doug? How, what would you prefer it's to Doug, be called? Doug, yeah. Doug. Yeah, Doug. Um, um, so this is the first book of four in your Warsaw Quartet. Mm -hmm. um, and you are a very acclaimed writer anyway you've written 17 historical novels um and mystery thrillers um nine of those based around rome um i think there's about 13 of them based are, are roman based yeah yeah so this was quite a quite a move to uh to a different sort of era um yeah. would you like to just tell us a little bit about the book to start with yeah um blood roses as you say it's um first of a series set in warsaw um, and it follows the main protagonist um, from 1939 to 1944, the years of the occupation. Um, the, the protagonist, is, the main protagonist, is called Jan Kalish. Um, he's a Warsaw police officer before the war and a military reservist, as um, most of young men in Poland would be at that time. Mm. Um, and when the story starts, um, he's in hospital injured after um, a, being wounded defending the frontiers um, and he, he all he wants is to get back into the fight but when he uh, is recovering in hospital he gets a visit from a mysterious sort of stranger uh, who basically asks him to stay in position after um, they, they, they know, know by now that the Nazis are going to conquer war, so it's only a matter of hours, basically. Um, so he, he asked them to, to, to stay in the job as a policeman and work with the Germans, although it means he's going to be a collaborator. And mm. um, But meanwhile, be working for the fledgling Polish resistance, which has been set up to deal with this moment, but they're really at a really amateur stage and in, in bits at that time. Um, and he's not keen at first because all, all he wants to do really is fight. Um, yeah. But but eventually he agrees. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's it's a really sort of gripping no novel. I really enjoyed it. I really got into it quickly. And mm -hmm. like you say, it's, you know, from the outset, you've got the action of, you know, him being injured and then sort of being recruited. Um, and um, I was, yeah, I sort of will come back to the sort of collaboration element later because I found that really sort of fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and so what sort of inspired you to move from um, your sort of more historic? I mean, this is historical, but obviously not quite as historical as Rome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what sort of gave you the inspiration to write about this period? Well, it, it, it didn't happen recently. Um, this book Genesis was about ten years ago, in about twenty fourteen. At that time, I was I was writing um, a, I was writing the Roman based books, the Valerius series, and I was also writing my Jamie Sinclair novels, which is the um, you know mystery with a bit of history, sort of action adventure yeah. type thing. <laughs> I like that I mystery I, with history. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed writing those books, um, but I, I did four of them, and and they all did really well they actually they've, they've sold probably better most of them than the historical novels but for mm. whatever reason my publisher pulled the plug on them and uh at that time you know to make a living i needed to be writing two books a year so yeah. I, I i tried to find another way of to get a, a different stream going um yeah and what happened was that i have an uncle or i had an uncle uh, his name is casimir Garzil. Who is a who is a Pole, and he married my aunt during the war, my aunt Margaret, um, and he's always been a bit of an enigma in the family. He's quite an exotic mm. character, um, but gradually, just during um, the res early research for the book, 
I discovered that he was a, a genuine war hero. He won the Polish the um, Silver Cross of the Virtuti Militari, which is the Polish equivalent of the Victoria Cross. Wow. In a, an incredible, incredibly brave uh, thing. He basically a attacked a group of tanks on a motorbike and saved 18 of his comrades. And I was just oh, inspired to, I would, I, I, when I started thinking about this new stream that I want to do, I thought, why don't I, I do a book I can dedicate to my uncle Kazimierz? And, um, and, and that's basically what happened. So I mm -hmm. set it in Poland for that reason. But I, I, as, as time went by, I understood that um, I'd, just sometimes as a writer, you strike a really rich vein. And uh, 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 the first book, fine, I knew exactly what I was going to do. But very gradually, I realized that there was a real um, vein of uh, history mm -hmm. and um, jeopardy in the, the the five years that followed the the, the sort of um, the occupation of Warsaw, and no city suffered more than Warsaw did during the war. Um, so, so it, it just became a sort of natural thing. So I wrote the book at that time, ten years ago, yeah. or the original of the book. Wow! It's, it's developed over the years, mm -hmm. but um, I couldn't find a publisher for it, um, and just just one of these things. Uh, so I just had to sit until my agent Stan, a couple of oh, eighteen months ago or so, um, he suggested that we approach Canelo, uh, who'd been interested in doing historical novels with me, uh, with the idea for Blood Roses and the, the Warsaw Quartet. And happily, it's out there now and I love it. It's a, I think it's a really good book. So Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. And it's not, it's not, it's not the type, it's not a book that I would normally have picked up. So I really enjoyed that because I, I, I mean, I love my, I love the, the historical element of it with the, you know, your sort of quite dark, serial killer who we'll come on to in a mm. bit a bit later but um i thought the characters were really interesting and obviously i can understand now why they particularly yan feels very real i felt he felt you know mm -hmm. i mean but obviously the was he sort of inspired by your uncle or was he sort of more you know no he was um I'd, character wise um my my character Valerius uh, had, had an injury that made him unique. Basically, you know, he was was he disabled, I suppose. Um, and you're always looking for something that makes a character unique. Yeah. But in 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 Jan's case, it was the circumstances that he was in that was mm. unique. They were the the things that um, basically made him the man who he was because he he's forced to live this double life where he, even his wife doesn't know that he's working for the resistance she suspects of course but yeah yeah the, 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 they can never sort of tell each other she's working for the resistance as well but you know most yeah. poles were um most uh, people in warsaw were involved one way or the other um with the the army of Krajowa as it became um and i don't know jan just I suppose it, it just it's 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 where he is, what he has to do, how he has to deal with the circumstances that in mm -hmm. the, that make him the character that he was and the interesting character that he was. I mean, because it didn't all go well. This the, this um, mysterious stranger said, you know, go and work for the Nazis, and you you can basically just you know fit in there. But yeah. of course, that that didn't happen. The, the Nazis no. just kicked them all out, and only gradually they knew that they needed you know, Polish policemen yeah. to, to actually, you know, create normality in Warsaw. And the and, and and he had to prove himself to work his way in. And he always knew there were lines he was going to have to cross and that it would be painful for him. And maybe there, someday there was a line that he couldn't cross. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, that's always at the back of things. I mean, as the books develop, um, I think it gets more and more claustrophobic because you can't operate in that kind of existence with the Gestapo all around yeah. you and Poles dying right, left and centre and you, you're you trying to feed, you, you haven't steal um, to, to, to give the resistance what they want. Um, 
so it, the, the squeeze just gets tighter and tighter in the books so it just develops that way and then that creates his character it, it develops his character even more yeah, because I think um, in, in the beginning, you know, he, he he has to sort of play the game quite early on with the, with the, with the Gestapo, doesn't he? Because when they come into to like his work and, mm. and um, you know, not everybody's quite as able to sort of carry off what he does. And, but because he was injured, he sort of makes out that he hasn't really had much to do with. Exactly. And the, the other key factor in his character is, and I should probably have mentioned this, is that he's half German. And that's the yeah. reason, one reason why they recruited him, because he, he, he is, um, his mother's German, his father's Polish, he speaks fluent German, and then the resistance think that, that, that believe that he um, can think like a German. So it means that he can fit in where others probably wouldn't. Um, but even so, he's derided by um, his German colleagues at the start. Um, mm. And yeah, you know, there are a couple of incidents where he, I mean, he's a fighter. When I did, I, I don't know. It didn't it doesn't come across in the book as it is now. But originally, he was like a, a sort of flyweight boxer, um, you know, the police boxing champion yeah. you know, for Warsaw. Um, so he can handle himself, and there are times when he has to just like really um, rein it in. Yeah, mm. <laughs> and I think also the flip side of that as well, because he's German, the Germans almost think that they can sort of turn him to their side don't they because he's mm -hmm. you know he's got he's half german so mm -hmm. they're like well you know we we you know we can you can help we can us. use we can use him yeah, yeah. but the, the, the other thing is that he has to be german to survive yeah um and again as the books develop in in blood roses he's an outsider for most of the book in the, the, the in the later books he's a, an accepted part of the organization which in a way makes it worse because he's actually people make friends with him and he yeah. knows they might ha have to kill these people someday uh, and it may well come to that so <clears throat> yeah i mean it's it's I, yeah i sort of found that um it, that was very stressful i found that those like the i think there's quite a lot of parts of the book that are stressful to read and you mm. said about that claustrophobia yeah. and actually that's that comes across because although he doesn't really have a choice, does he, to, to yeah. do what he's doing? You know, it's either that or die. And mm. his wife is quite clear that she doesn't want him to embarrass them or make or shame them, doesn't she? Shame she says, don't right, shame yeah. us. Yeah. Um, and um, I thought that was really, oh, yeah, I thought it was really interesting how oh, he's that... under, under pressure from every, every sort of, angle as it were yeah and, uh, yeah and then and that makes that makes the, the dilemmas he faces and the decisions he has, has to make are, are what makes the book what it is and i didn't realize just how dark these books were going to be when I, I started writing them but once i knew the story of warsaw um you know I did one, uh, one guy who's, who's read the book says it's so dark you have to read it by torchlight <laughs> <laughs> they are quite dark i mean i quite like dark so yeah. i mean and that's you know without go we'll go on to the we'll go on to the murderer but they're dark without the murderer aren't they because of yeah, what's yeah. happening and what's yeah. they, mm. i think that's probably why they feel so dark because you've got almost like two dimensions of darkness you've got yeah, the darkness yeah. of what is you've happening got the, you've got the i mean warsaw, warsaw and 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 the, and the um the ordeal of Warsaw and the people of Warsaw is a character, is probably a mm. bigger character than, than Jan Kalish is. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so so I, I wanted that to come through. The, the, the city was really difficult to, I didn't, I never knew right at the start that Warsaw had, had, had been absolutely wiped off the map. Physically, mm. it had been wiped off the map at the end of the war. So I had to find a way to rebuild the city as it was in 1939. Um, and that that had its own challenges as well. So, uh, no, it's a fascinating book to write, in and I really I've enjoyed writing all of them. Yeah. How did you um? How did you sort of research? You know, what you sort of started obviously with the idea of you know your uncle and that sort of idea. But then, where did your research sort of lead you? Did it take you down any big rabbit holes? 
there's always always rabbit holes. <laughs> I, I love the research side of things, and I love I love history. So I just I go into things, and I end up just oh, just spend an hour in there. And you yeah. it so much. The, the key to it is not putting it on the book, of course. You just yeah. use what you have to use. But oh no, just absolutely you know fascinating stuff about. Um, I don't know. You just you get a a, a real feel for the, the atmosphere of terror when you start getting into the, the detail of these, what they called lapankas, was, was, was just a, basically a roundup that could happen to anybody at any time. Mm. And they'd take, you know, the, the, the Gestapo or the, the security police would surround, you know, a square or a block in, in, a, 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 in the city and they would just take everybody off to a concentration camp or the Paviak prison um as hostages and the next time somebody shot a shot a german officer a hundred of them would die you know a hundred innocents um and uh, it just gives you a real feel for what the people yeah were. yeah i saw something i, I follow <clears throat> on twitter um the uh, auschwitz memorial or auschwitz museum i think it is. yeah <clears throat> and every day you get what happened to people in Auschwitz, and and one of them was like a Polish artist, and he'd been in an artist cafe. Um, he was picked up, I don't know, September nineteen forty one or something like that, but then just picked up, uh, just having a drink with his mates probably, mm -hmm. rounded up one of these lapankas, and then a month later he was shot because of something that happened in Krakow. Uh, so just he was just in the wrong place at the just wrong the wrong time. place, the right the wrong time, and yeah. there were tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of poles were caught in that situation um it must have been a really scary time to live i think when with him as well with jan coming you know he he has people coming to him i can think in the beginning quite early on in the book he has um it's a is it the cousin or the the nephew yes, yeah, yeah and and they sort of he you know he is like you said he's under pressure from all angles of yeah. like the family from the he, he has to survive he has to do what he has to do yeah but he yeah. knows you know when he first has to do that when he's doing admin for the for want of the better word of for the for, yeah, the, for the germans <clears throat> you know, sort of you know identifying jewish people and and mm. you know that's really mm. you know it must have been horrific to do but actually the option of not oh, doing you can, it you couldn't say no or it'd be you that was in the concentration yeah. camp yeah yeah so um, yeah, yeah best really yeah so how did the how did the murder so the artist is is the murderer yeah um, uh, sort of, we've got the two perspectives in the book haven't we we've got the perspective of jan and then we've got the perspective of the artist who mm -hmm. do you want to tell us a bit about about him with the artist yeah um I don't know, you just <laughs> you're writing a crime novel. You need a crime, basically. I think that's that's the genesis of it. Um, and serial killers always interested me um, to a certain extent. I think I'm not, I'm not sure, but one of my Jamie Sinclair books probably has had some sort of research that I needed to look into the mind of the serial killer type of thing. Mm. And I just this character came into my head. I knew. It's because of the power the Germans had over everybody in Warsaw. If I could put a serial killer in a place where people were dying on the streets every day or being taken away, being shot, um, and you know, the, the uh, and the, the character of the killer is such that he has power over you know the power of life and death, basically yeah. over everybody around them, all the poles around them. Um, and then there's also the a serial killer in Warsaw. They, they wouldn't have been in, in the, 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 the Germans um, wouldn't have been the least interested in poles dying or Jews yeah. dying. They would do, they, they would have just written it off as a, yeah, these things happen type of thing. So the only thing that really, brings Jan and brings the Warsaw cripple into the investigation is when a when a German girl dies and she's the niece of a, a very high ranking German general and then things start getting serious. Suddenly um the Germans decide that they're gonna shoot three or four hundred people 
for this girl's death because they think it's a pole. And mm -hmm. Jan believes that it, it's not a pole, it's a member of the occupying forces. So he has to really, he's, he's not in a position to, as a, to be a detective then, but he no. has to be, he tries to get involved in the investigation. And that's another aspect of it that makes it, I think, interesting is that he's still not at the centre of the investigation, but he's, he's always on the periphery and he's always, he, he learns things and he knows yeah. things that the others don't know. And um, and I just think that the artist is a character, I mean, serial killers kill, basically. The artist's got a slightly different um, modus operandi. Yeah. And I tried, I, I wanted to make them different. You always want to make people the interesting and different and, and I think I managed that but uh, yeah, it's a serial killer is a serial killer. <laughs> I mean it's quite interesting as well because as you as you're reading the book and you've got the perspective of him and of Jan as you read through um, and then as Jan becomes more involved with other officers you don't know you don't know whether he's one of them whether it's somebody else you don't know who he is. Um, yeah and he doesn't know who he is. So um, mm. I think it's that's quite clever. And I liked that, how you, you don't really know where you're going. Was that quite yeah. difficult to sort of write? Did you write them separately or did you write them together? No, I wrote them together, but it, yeah, it is, I mean, it, the book developed over, you know, several drafts once. Um, yeah. And my editor, Craig of Canelo, got involved in it. Originally it was, it was a sort of hybrid, and it still is to a certain extent, but um, he wanted the crime element to be front and centre. Mm. So I did develop the artist through the edits that we did um, so that he became, well, he became, a, he was always a, a main character, but he was a little bit more, he had a bit more to do. Um, but that also means you've got to hide his character because it has to be the, the reader has to think that it's somebody yeah you know um, <laughs> yeah. but you always, you, always, you always hope that it's the wrong person that's thinking about yeah. it yeah <laughs> and, and and also because because of he is who he is um he, there are hundreds upon hundreds of others who it could be yeah but obviously you're introducing characters to pique the interest of the readers. So it has to be a quite a small um, yeah. number. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, that was the most difficult bit, I think, was, was hiding it? him yeah. until the end. But uh, the final twist never came to me until the book was finished. Really? I realized, yeah, I realized that I'd been inserting all these little details in subconsciously as I was writing yeah. it. And yeah. it was only as I was winding up the book, I thought, Oh, <laughs> so that's what happened then. I mean, just quite incredible. You're, sometimes your subconscious writes the book for you and you don't know what the hell's happening. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because people say that, don't they? they? People say, you know, the characters become their own people and, and sometimes they do, they do what they want to do. So I yeah. guess that's partly your subconscious as well. Oh, doing yeah, that. yeah. I, I yeah. found that right from the start. Yeah, it's, um, they, they don't. Yeah, they, they don't write the book for themselves but no. certainly, certainly they influence you yeah. yeah did you um what was it difficult writing in the first person from them but did you did you always sort of know that because you sort of you're sort of writing you know you write from his from both of their perspectives yeah um did you was that was that difficult to write from there or was it no i think that i think that's the easiest way to write it because basically with my books i tried to I put the character in a position where he's under threat under strain under pressure uh and i challenge him to get out of it basically so you have to be in the character's head and yeah. you have to suffer what the character suffers um and yeah, if I'm if I'm sweating during a, a, a thing that that's happening in the book, but the yeah. character should be sweating. I know I'm on the right track there. Um, and the, the serial killer, uh, I, I, I actually, my, the first book that I wrote uh, was published as Caligula, um, and 
a but it, it wasn't the book that I originally wrote and they I, I originally wanted to be my original title was the Emperor's Elephant because it is the Emperor's Elephant is a main character um, but when the publisher decided to call it Caligula the main character is actually a slave called Rufus and I had to I thought if I read this book has been called Caligula, I better get some Caligula in here. <laughs> so I, I wrote a sort of spine of about nine inserts in the mind of the Emperor Caligula, who is as mad as any serial killer is or might have been. Um, yeah. And I think when I did that, I really enjoyed that, being inside his head mm -hmm. and thinking, trying to think the way that he did. And I think that that probably really prepared me for writing yeah. the kind of character that's in blood roses because i think that's that's it, it's i was thinking about like the col the collaboration and things and 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 being in the mind of yan of being in that situation is i think there must have been quite a lot of times where you were sweating when you were writing as him because yeah oh yeah yeah it's um yeah it's, i think these these are really as i say they're dark books sometimes they can challenge you mentally um, mm. Is, and the later books are more than the first book as well, um, because they get darker, and they, they, you know you you have to go into some dark places in Warsaw in these mm. these years. Um, yeah, so it, I, you have these these challenges, and uh, yeah, but it's like battle scenes when I, I write used to write the historical battle scenes yeah and, you know, i'd come away from the computer and i'd be trembling so i think <laughs> uh, yeah it's just the, the, if the adrenaline's going for you um you know that it, it's likely that the adrenaline is going to be working for the reader as well um and it, the, the pace of the book you know you the, the second book i wrote in two months or something like that and it just really? like whew, flowed yeah um, wow that's open. amazing you're hoping that the reader feels that sort of galloping pace as well. We'll see because it's with my editor now, so he'll come back and probably say slow. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you really, this, the other thing, the other part of the book that I really enjoyed is, well, enjoyed is probably not the right word, but was sort of gripped by was the atmosphere of that sort of the suspense and the tension as the book progresses. And, and it's not just about setting, it's, it's more than that and I think I was really interested in how you managed to get that onto the page because it was because obviously I don't know I don't know Warsaw at all but actually I didn't need to because mm -hmm. it, it was it wasn't it wouldn't have mattered where it was it yeah because the tension's there yeah yeah it's it's just as all I do is go back to my to the start of the interview it's just who the character is and the situation that he's in <clears throat> and and you know I think I'm good at that, that, that being inside the person and feeling yeah. what they're feeling and maybe describing what's happening around them. I can't really explain, um, you know, technically how it, no. uh, how, <laughs> how it works. But, uh, no, but actually, just, maybe that is it. Maybe it's because you are so involved in the person that that's yeah. why it becomes more claustrophobic and more, yeah. you know, yeah. sort of suspenseful. Yeah, even the even the naming was a wee bit designed to, to create that situation because we, we had a wee discussion at, during the editing phase. You know, should he be Jan or should he be Kalish? And yeah. I said, I, I think he has to be Kalish at least in the first book and probably in the rest of the books as well because it it, it sort of deepens the sense of isolation. Yeah. You know, you're you're taking a step back and looking at him you know, as a man without a first name type of thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I, th I think that, that kind of detail helps as well. Um, yeah. Well, I think that sort of having that, who are they, what are they doing, it, mm. it's that sort of element of, you know, I, I always think that if you're surprised as a reader, I think that always helps, doesn't it? You know, yeah. you want yeah. to... You don't want to know everything because that's boring if you if you can read you know if you get into page i don't know halfway through the book and you've worked out who did it and mm -hmm. you know you don't yeah. want to, well i don't want to do that no, I, you don't I want to do that no no <laughs> um, i want to be sort of and actually yeah the fact that i got to the end of this one i was like well i want the next one now 
<laughs> yeah, that's, so, that's, been, that's been quite the reaction. Yeah. That's yeah. Been, that's been yeah. a really, it's a really good thing. Yeah. And I, I think the second book's better than the first book. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Yeah, no, because that because I mean you've been writing for for a lot of years, haven't you? As you were a journalist before, so yeah. um, you know the, how different was it? Because obviously your other books were sort of like you said, history, mis mystery, history, mystery, history, history, mystery, <laughs> history, um, mystery with a bit of history, yeah, mystery, <laughs> yeah. Um, and but again, this one is more. I mean, it, it is still historical, but it is much more of a sort of police procedural sort of crime novel how different how different was that than than writing that you'd had done before um it, I, i've actually written two uh crime novels right at the start when i wrote the emperor's elephant um, yeah and i wrote that basically on the train when i was working 12 hour days type of things um and i got to the end of it and you know you're you're a writer, but you're not an author. Uh, no. You've got no idea whether this book is any good or if it's going to sell or whatever. And I got to the end of it and I thought, what am I going to do now? <laughs> because I, <laughs> I had no idea how to start the editing process then. That was 2005, probably 2005 or six. And I thought, OK, write the next book. That's what you want to do. So I, I wrote a crime novel set in the borders where I came from, come from. Um, yeah. And I tried to do a um, kind of James Lee Burke thing, you know, how Louisiana is a character in his books. Yeah. Um, and I wanted, I, I wanted to, I, I, I wanted the Borders to be a character. I didn't quite bring it off, but uh, but I wrote two crime books um, with a main character called Glenn Savage. I like to name it. it was like Scottish and heroic, and he was <laughs> a, a Falklands veteran who, and he was a psychic as well. Um, he had psychic powers, which was a bit weird, but uh, I thought it worked. But I made him, I, I made him too hard, a bit too, I don't know, macho, and mm. yeah. So the, the the books didn't sell, but I wrote the two books, and I got Wait. into the the crime rhythm with it. Yeah, you know, the red herrings, and you know, not giving away too much too soon, and and I think that was my learning process these two books led directly to Blood Roses because everything that I learned in them and all the mistakes that I made allowed me not to make them here. And the other thing that helped is um, my agent, Mark Stanton, Stan uh, of the North Literary Agency. When I was writing the, um, uh, the Jamie Sinclair books, he suggested that I do what we call a chapter treatment because originally the first two books that I did, I just, you know, basically started writing and see what happens. But um, since Stan suggested that, I, basically what I do is I write a paragraph and with a bit of dialogue in it and a bit of character yeah. in it for every chapter of the book. So that basically by the time you've done those 45 paragraphs, you've got the book in your head. You know what the characters sound like, oh, you know where they're going. You've yeah. ironed out all those little blind alleys that I used to write myself up and then <laughs> have to write myself back out of again. So it makes it a much more straightforward process. Obviously, the book develops, and it, I've never had a book yet that actually was the same as the chapter profile that I did. Um, but the beginning and the end always are, you know, you because you, you have a a direction you have signposts along the way that yeah. tell you you're going obviously you get new characters involved you get new scenarios you, you come up with big scenes but um but the the the, the basic arc of the book is there and it, it kind of stays there and that helped me with blood roses yeah that's a really interesting i've not heard of that before actually because that that sort of that's quite sometimes people will get to the middle and they've got absolutely no idea where it's going they might mm -hmm. know the beginning and the end and that's mm -hmm. it yeah so actually that's a really good way of of oh if i find it absolutely you know i've done it now for for 20 books and, yeah you know, I, I, I just i live by it i i know that if i can do a chapter treatment for a book that interests me i yeah. can write the book it's just a yeah. question of getting your head down and doing it yeah <laughs> And you know, it's a, that's a nice feeling. You, you were saying about being a journalist and things. 
I got very bored by the end of the journalism. I, I wrote the, the book a lot on the train, uh, yeah. the original, the first book, and I was whistling the Great Escape tune while I was doing it. <laughs> I, was, I was pretty high up in the Scotsman at the time and I was earning an awfully good salary. You know? But once I'd written the first book, I knew I had to write, write books because I knew that I had a talent for it. And if you got yeah. a talent, it would be completely wrong to waste it. And yeah, you know, my old dad, God rest him, he, he, he said to me, yeah, that, that's the old cliche, don't give up the day job. And I said, Dad, <laughs> I have to. You know, that's, you yeah. know, I just have to do it. And, you know, in a way he was right because we've, you know, it, it hasn't been easy, but um, yeah, I got here now. I think as well, it's, it's um, that, that sort of having that fulfillment in your job is, is, is it more important, you know, it's, oh, a it's, long it's worth, worth, worth more than money. The fact that I can, you know, I've, I haven't been writing today. I've been um, looking after a three-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, which oh, is wow. a lot tougher than writing, I can assure you. Oh, everybody knows these things, but, uh, yeah, it's a hard work. It's been hard work today. But, um, yeah, the, the, yeah I, I, was, I was writing yesterday, and, uh, yeah, yeah a, good, a good day at writing when you look back and you see the progress that you've made and, you know, you got a couple of paragraphs in there that you think, did I really write that? It's a, you, know, you just, it is, you get a, a real sense of joy and fulfillment. Mm. And yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah I, I really feel privileged to, to have been able to write for a living for, since, I think it's 15 years now. So it's been a, just. Because I mean, it isn't, it isn't, people sort of, you know, there are people that, you know, earn a lot of money as writers, but actually, the majority of people it is it's hard work isn't it it's hard yeah. work and it's, yeah, it's not... hard work for for short rations that's for yeah sure. <laughs> I, I was i was uh, having a look at my royalty statement the other day and i get I, an, I average 30p per ebook wow and that's i, I sell a fair it. few ebooks but 30p it takes a lot of them to make a living out of. yeah that's not very much at all i know i used to work in libraries and so you get your do you get your do you, do you get oh, the piano PLR money, yes. yeah yeah that's Big day. That's a big day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We always celebrate the PLR money. <laughs> no, I don't, yeah. no, I don't, you know, thanks to everybody who takes a book from the library as, as well as sells it because you know these they mount up and they, they do, they, yeah. They make a difference. They they paid the mortgage a couple of times. That's <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, I've got a comment on here, somebody saying, um, I can't see who it is, so sorry, whoever it is, but saying she um they recently read um codename madeline and it reflects the realities of war hauntingly it was stupendously written but i don't know how i feel about it is it hard to find the nuance where you show the reality but keep it balanced um i think that's up to the reader to decide to be honest as an author all you do is you write the story you've got your character you've got your situations they live it um you present the story to your editor and he'll inevitably ask you to change some of it and you know he might tell you to back off with certain dis bits of descriptiveness um but i think that the thing that, that, that i think the question is basically war has a profound effect on everybody it touches. Mm. Um, sometimes a very deadly effect, and sometimes it's you, you know, you're at a distance from it, and you have to watch people being killed or hear about it on 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 the radio or the TV and everything. But it, every, everything it touches is uh, it taints in a way, um, and when you're writing about war time and the situation that Jan, Jan Kalisha is in all you can do is be true to it yeah and if that offends the reader then maybe they're reading the wrong book I don't know I, 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 yeah, I'm not trying to push anybody away from the books but yeah you as we said earlier you know there's a darkness in these books but there has to be because you, yeah. you can't make war easy or nice, nice. and uh, it never will be you know we're seeing it at the moment it's um, some horrendous things going on yeah, yeah it's i mean it is i think you know there's there's lots of 
books that are that are dark for different reasons and I think when you pick up a book you sort of know um you know I you know you know what you're picking up in a way yeah. so I think it's I, it is difficult isn't it because you know some people don't want to read you know there's like trigger warnings and things like that and I guess you know mm -hmm. but I think writing historically for me I definitely felt I, I didn't really um because I'm in my 50s I didn't do I didn't do um second world war history very much mm. because it wasn't that long it wasn't yeah it wasn't <laughs> it, history it wasn't, then. That, it wasn't that historic then um mm. so actually to find out more and also I think you know they probably taught very basic about you know you know probably d-day and things like that but didn't go to sort of you know about Poland and, no, and no. so actually it was really interesting um and actually all these years later you know what the difference of like for you writing about sort of Roman times and you know I mean there's probably horrifically barbaric things that went on in but it's that f it's further away isn't it do you think that it, makes a difference it, it it does it does because the you know the the, the the relatives of the people who died in Warsaw you know their grandchildren and their you know uh, and their grand and their children yeah you know, will still have memories of the people that, that exactly, I'm writing yeah. about and the situations that I'm writing about um and yeah, and you want to be true to the memory of it. And mm. I've tried that with all of the, the historical novels as well. Um, yeah, the, you're talking about the, the sort of graphicness of things. And yeah. I, when, I, when I wrote the Caligula, there was a, a, a scene in it that a, involved a leopard being killed in the arena. The leopard, the, the emperor, the, the main character is an animal, animal trainer, and he become too friendly with the red the leopard so the um his the animal trainer's boss basically thought they had to get rid of the leopard and he yeah. died I, I killed it in a really or i wrote the death of it in a really really graphic way and, and because it was like the, the gladiator was an entertainer mm. so the the animal had to die artistically and it was horrible it was really when i look back at it now it was horrible but I was I was trying to impress people by my writing. Yeah. But it was wrong. It, it, it was just, and and nowadays I, I I always think twice about it. The other thing about that is that um, an animal rights organisation posted a thing on me saying that I was as cruel to animals, although it was a work of fiction set two thousand years ago, which was <laughs> interesting to say the least. But yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, I'm saying you. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you're never going to please all the people all of the time. But I you guess can't. that's interesting that you've reflected on that and and that's something that you, you wouldn't do again. No, and yet, you know, you can't write about a serial killer like the artist without writing what he does. So Exactly. Well, yeah, and I think, that's, that. you know, people like crime, don't they? And people mm -hmm. like gruesome crime. And, you know, it's, you know, it's one of the most popular genres. Yeah, yeah. as um, long as you're not doing it gratuitously i think i think that's yeah. the key to it for me now is yeah. that you know i'm not i'm not, I'm not writing for me i'm writing for it's got to be part of the book it's got to be it, to earn its place there as it were yeah. yeah um so you you've mentioned book two and 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 obviously there's going to be book three and book four mm -hmm. um when you started so you were saying about that the sort of chapter thing did you sort of always have in your mind what book one two three and four were going to be or was it you wrote one and then yeah, sort of I always had, yeah yeah I knew, I knew right i wrote when i pitched it to stan uh, way back when uh, I, I basically wrote a synopsis for four books um now as it turns out book three is completely different from what i'd originally planned because um you know chronologically it, the guy couldn't be in two places at once, which he would have to be. But I didn't. Right. I would. I didn't really understand the chronology perfectly when I when then because you because you just when you come up with an idea for a book, you don't do a huge amount of research. You just do enough to, mm. you know, basically create the scenarios. Um, yeah, but but yeah, I did. You know, um, I I did the four books. I always knew exactly. I knew where the first book started. I knew where the last book ended. And it was just a question of 
filling it in with you know what happened. The third book's different, but it, and it's interesting because it's set in Scotland. Um, it's um, set in Arisig, uh on the west coast of Scotland, which was the Special Operations Executive um, Training Grounds. Um, oh, and so it involves a Polish SOE agent who's who's murdered. And the odd thing about that is that came to me because I I found I came across this. You were talking about rabbit holes, research rabbit holes. Yeah. I came across this single paragraph in a local newspaper on the west coast, and it said it said that a Polish woman had been found. Um, dead on the foreshore at RSAG in unexplained circumstances. And that was it. That was that was it. One basically a sentence really rather yeah. than a paragraph. And that just started the wheels yeah. moving and, and you know, a Polish service woman, she must have been involved in the SOE in some form or other. Mm. Was she a spy? Was she a driver? Was she a cook? Whatever. Um, oh, how did she die? You know, did somebody kill her or so and then from that single spark book three emerges from and book it's it's yeah and i'm very happy with it it's uh, but the, the funny thing is that it's another thing that you learn is there jan kalish is in, in warsaw but if it was deemed important enough to fly him to london they would do it and it happened you know any number of times during the war that um, you know Polish uh, envoys and Polish agents they would be parachuted in but to get back they'd either have to go you know overland maybe from Danzig or to Danzig and then across to yeah. um, Sweden or Denmark or they'd maybe get them out through Switzerland or something like that but other times they would fly them direct from Poland to Britain or Poland to Brindisi in Italy where um, the Polish SOE squadron was based. So I, I, I was slightly concerned that people would think it was a bit mad bringing a Polish detective to, to Britain. But if you got the motivation for that to happen, yeah. historically, it's accurate that it could have happened. And, uh, and that, that's, that's all fascinating, I isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the reason I wrote, wrote that book was because and I wrote it before we got the deal for from Canelo. It was because I believed in the Jan Kalish character. Yeah. Uh, but I was I, I thought, right, if I can't sell that, then I need to make it more commercial. So I brought him to Britain because yeah. I thought it would be people would be more familiar with the you know the places and the names and that yeah. sort of thing. So that was the genesis of that. And uh, it worked incredibly well, I think. So book two has gone off to your editor now. So yeah. you know when that one sort of might yeah, that, be? That's out November, I think, the 14th. Oh, great. Oh, that's yeah, not, uh, yeah. not too long to wait then. No, we, just, we, <laughs> we decided since I had three books in the bag, um, yeah, be basically, they'd basically be out every six months. And I'm, I'm working on book four now and, uh, you know, getting through it. So, and yeah, the character grows and he's, yeah, I, I like the way he develops. But, yeah, uh, but I'm really in, interested to see how oh, he develops. He's, he's in trouble a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, and the thing is, is because it's like quite early on, you know that, you know, he, you know that he's got a lot of trials and tribulations to go through, yeah. <laughs> if he survives to book four, then a lot of things have happened in between. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at the time and we're nearly at eight o'clock, but um, I was wondering, um, do, who's your, do you have a favourite author? Do you have um, somebody that you sort of go to? Have you got a go to? Yeah, I've got, I've got two or three, actually. Um, Patrick O'Brien. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Aubrey Maturin books I've read about 20 times and still get stuff out of them. <laughs> hey, I love John Le Carre. Um, John Le, I've got John Le Carre's book here. Ah, a Private Spy. He, um, he sent me a letter. I, I, I managed to get Caligula to him because his son worked beside me at the Scotsman. And uh, I, I, I very cheekily asked, asked him to have a look at it. <laughs> give me a plug for the front cover. Aye, right, yeah. And uh, But he sent me his four-page letter back 
saying what a good writer I was and just to persevere and get away with it. And, and, I, and then advice about publishing and the publishing industry. And I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, that's just amazing. fantastic. And uh, so it's in the letters in this book. I'm um, sorry, that book. Ah, yeah. Oh, like that's really... It's the, the letters. And, and his son, Tim, who sadly is no longer with us, um, he, he edited the books. So I was very grateful that he got it in. Um, that's lovely. Yeah, and the other one's George, George MacDonald Fraser, um, yeah, who has his critics, and rightly so, but uh, the Flashman books are fantastic. I love them. And you, you, you said that um, Blood Roses kind of piqued your interest in the period and things. Mm. That was one of the things that I, I, I kind of set out. One of the things, that the aims that I had in mind was I wanted to entertain, I wanted to educate as well. And the yeah. Flashman books were the sort of were what sparked that because they're filled with history and they make you want to go and um, you know get an actual military fiction book out to see what's happening. And yeah. So yeah. So I'm I'm glad you said that actually. Yeah. No, I definitely did. I I really it's a, like I said it's a period. I mean, obviously, you know, I know about the World War Two, but I had not had any sort of um, knowledge mm -hmm. about you know World War Two in Poland, and so. Yeah, I really liked him as a character and I really liked I liked the sort of the serial killer aspect mm. of it as well. I think that sort of definitely heightened mm. my interest as well. Yeah. So now yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm looking for, looking forward to seeing what happens to him next. Yeah. Although I might need to take, get my nerves. <laughs> in no, I think so because it's, it's, it's one thing the other. It's a scary book and um, yeah, it's it gets into some situations and you know, there's, there's, there's one bit in it where I have a tear in my eye when I read it, so, <laughs> and, and I know exactly what's happening. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, there's definitely bits in it where you're sort of like, oh, I think I might put this down for a minute. Um, you know, there's it, it's because it's it's so tense. Um, uh, and I really like that. I I really like the the tension. Yeah, thank, in thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed. Really pleased you enjoyed it. No, I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, yeah, so um. If you want to sort of show, if you've got your copy there, because mine, I've only got, I'll show my side one because right. I've are. got the proof the is, uh, is out Jackson, now. Blood Roses, first of the Warsaw Quartet. Um, yeah, out now um, from Canelo um, Books. And yeah, and we look forward to, if you'd um, like to come on again and, and have a chat with us about book two in November, we'd love Definitely. to have you on. I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed chatting to you, Karen. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Doug. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for sharing um, all your knowledge about the books and, and your other books as well. So thanks, everybody, for joining us this evening. Um, we'll be back soon. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.